Okay, let's start off then. Okay, now it's working, okay. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk first about what is WAM. Uh, WAM stands for Web Application Manager. It's the LG Web OS web runtime. Uh, it's built on top of Chromium nowadays. Uh, Web OS, it's the operating, uh, it's an operating system for embedded products. It's web authentic. So the idea is that web applications are first class citizens to the same level of native applications or even more prominent in, in WebOS. Um, the components is built on top of Yocto. Um, it uses Wayland for graphics uh, with QML for the Wayland compositing and Mollet for virtual keyboard. It has a unified media server and for IPC between applications, it has a JSON protocol that is named Luna. So, yeah, WAM is the centerpiece of the web experience in WebOS. So, places where it was used, HP Touchpad a long time ago, some Palm phones, when WebOS was uh, part of uh, the Palm uh, offering. Uh, nowadays, it's the key part of the web OS, uh, the LG uh, Smart TVs uh, from 2013. That's the, the main OS to use for, for those TVs. So we have hundreds of millions of users uh, using this. Uh, other products uh, we have implemented it in, Ro um, in the web OS and ROS integration. So we have some robot experiments, digital signage. Some appliances like this uh, fridge and uh, wearables like this clock. Uh, it is used uh, from 2018 in the WebOS open source edition. So basically, it's a uh, distribu public distribution with uh, open source basing all these components. Um, it is used nowadays also on AGL, on the automatic Linux. Uh, it's the web runtime for AGL. 
Um, so there was a port of the ELG WebOS web uh, runtime uh, to the EGL that is not WebOS. How it works? So this is the architecture. Uh, the Redis uh, areas are what is implemented by Chrome. Uh, Orange part is the, um, it's, nowadays it's also part of Chrome, but it's the integration with Wayland. Uh, there's the blue parts that are provided by WebOS, that are the Wayland Compositor and the IPC. And one is the green part, so it's um, finally built on top of uh, Chromium uh, that handles the running web applications in the system in an efficient way. So, so the thing, why, why we want to put WAM in, in OS? Basically, the idea is having high support of, for the web platform nowadays. Web platform moves fast, so if you want to get up to date to, to the latest standards, you need something that provides uh, the web standards and moves uh, as uh, the web stand, uh, as the Chromium baseline moves, uh, get the latest uh, web standards. Um, it controls the application lifecycle, so basically when you run a web application, one takes care of running it, of closing it, of reducing the um, saving memory resources, CPU resources, GPU resources, so they are properly distributed among the system, uh, saving CPU and battery uh, when applications are not visible to the user. So yeah, that's one of the greatest advantages is this uh, single web runtime. Uh, gives some performance improvements because we are sharing as much possible uh, the resources for running web content. This, the last one, launch time optimization, it's also quite critical because running a web stack is quite heavy thing nowadays. So being able to um, have things pre-launched, pre-warmed, is quite important for having a seamless web experience where uh, application launching is very fast and application switching is also fast. About security, uh, well, it has um, all the web standards about uh, how to run remote contents and also local contents through security origins. Um, security origins basically is uh, the sum of um, a scheme, the port, and the um, host part of the URL. Um, we have some permissions declared in our application manifest so we can uh, determine which uh, per, uh, the, uh, parts of the system a web application can use. And about developer tools, we have basically the same we will have on a Chrome browser. So we have the web inspector and developer tools and we have the Chromium tracer for having uh, performance analysis in the system. Um, I think that one of the important things is that it's been running for a long time in millions of LG TVs uh, on all the devices. So 10 years of experience, uh, it's proven, it's running, it's stable, and it's used for a long time. And now it's also adopted in the AGL reference platform too. So we have here some, some links for open source. Uh, the open source flavor of uh, WebOS, uh, and all the components are the same as uh, we, we have in smart TVs uh, related to WAM and WebOS OSC. So basically, you use WebOS OSC, you can try all these components uh, in your own devices. Okay, so let's move to the retrospective part. As I said, it's been 10 years, um, the main caveat here is that uh, I joined the WebOS project in October 2012. Uh, the history of WAM and WebOS starts before 2008, but I will mostly focus on what I lived and not on what happened before. Um, anyway, it's just lesson learned. I hope uh, some of them may be useful or insightful for, for you. Okay, so uh, a bit of history. Um, WebOS was developed by Palm that was acquired by HP in 2010. And then on 2011, HP decides that they don't want to develop any other WebOS product anymore. So the last device is a tablet that is HP Touchpad. 
But in 2012, the, there's a start of a partnership between uh, HP and LG for pouring web OS uh, for the LG Smart TV boards. The idea was that web OS could be the, base, the basis for the future smart TV uh, offered by LG. They had something that was named Netcast before, and it was hard to maintain, and it was hard to keep moving with uh, what was required for a future smart TV OS, where you would have more than one web application running at the same time, that switching, silly, that, that web OS were already providing at that time. Uh, so 2013, basically what happened was that LG acquired the, the business unit that, uh, that was Palm before. So basically the, the business unit that owned WebOS. Um, that business unit was uh, renamed to the LG Silicon Valley Labs at that time. And from uh, 2014, uh, LG WebOS Base TVs introduced in computer entertainment show in Las Vegas. And then the TVs were released a few months later. I think it's April 2014, the first LG Smart TVs uh, based on WebOS. Okay, more about open source. Uh, as I said, HP Palm decided to scrap all the WebOS new products. So they stopped uh, doing new products, and they did this. They uh, uh, published most of the source codes as, uh, as open WebOS um, with the idea, I think, well, uh, the feeling uh, at the right time, at that time, and nowadays is the same. And they opened it to attract interest in WebOS, to attract, in, uh, attract investors. Basically, uh, they were already considering uh, selling the, the business unit. Um, but uh, when LG um, acquired the, the Palm business unit, uh, they stopped maintaining open OS. So they came back to the non open source uh, developing model. Um, that was kind of um, a strong uh, problem. But uh, it was very, very hard. The, the work to put um, WebOS for smart TVs and releasing to products, that is something that sometimes it's not very clear. But when you have something like an open source product, um, some upstreaming, some public products, but then you want to get to release quality for a product for millions of users, uh, it's not easy. There's a lot of work the, to stabilize, to mature things to even pass controls um, by authorities about quality, uh, it's not very, very easy. So um, we all decided to focus on first having the smart TVs running WebOS, and then open sourcing again uh, would be an afterthought after that. Uh, usually that doesn't happen in the end. This kind of afterthought never happened, but in this case it happened. Um, so in 2018, like six years after uh, Open WebOS was uh, stopped, basically, AG releases WebOS Open Source Edition. Um, the focus was, in this case, allowing people to, to take this, uh, to prototype ideas, do experiments, uh, make things around WebOS, because basically you would have a UI um, user experience, a way to integrate these web components. Um, uh, yeah, the idea is students, independent developers, would have a way to prototype and do things with that. Uh, so again, the idea is creating a community around it. So OSC is acting nowadays. After five years, it's still there, so it's not something that is going away. Uh, the hardware target nowadays is uh, Raspberry Pi, and nowadays is uh, Pi 4 model. Um, my view, it simplifies testing new ideas. Uh, it allows uh, to start things like integrating uh, WAM and WebOS parts in ROS for robotics and in EGL for automotive. So, so yeah, it, it was quite a success in that uh, regard. But uh, there's also tons of experiments that have been happening that are quite useful for understanding uh, well, uh, for prototyping um, product ideas. 
So if you want to integrate um, web UI in your experimental product, OSC can help. Um, it's very easy to, to integrate web application, web contents, both third party and even running locally. Okay, um, so how it happens, we, we have WebOS, we have Open Source Edition. Um, there was the idea um, at LGSBL the, that it would be interesting to port parts of Chromium, um, the, the, the web runtime we have in, in WebOS, uh, to port it to a year, so it would have a web runtime with all the advantages, advantages we talked about. Uh, so it has been a collaboration between um, LG and Igalia and then uh, presented to the Linux Foundation. Uh, so in the end, a collaboration among the three. Um, before 2018, Igalia was assisting uh, putting Chrome browser adaptation uh, to Wayland on the current browser, so it was run in AGL. But in May, in 2017, uh, my team in LG Silicon Valley Labs uh, did the experiment to port one to AGL. Uh, it was actually one, one month, but it was uh, mostly working in two weeks. And then we started maintaining it uh, from 2019 uh, to the present. Okay, the, the thing is that uh, the experiment proved it was possible um, and now the focus is always moving to have, to be able to run AGL with only web UI. So basically uh, the main UI in, at that time in, in AGL was using Qt and um, the idea was that uh, if you didn't want to run on top of Qt, you could run on top of uh, WAM uh, and have all the system UI and uh, done as web applications. It also allowed to integrate with third-party applications, add with the system service, uh, services uh, as provided by them, and that's part of the continuous adaptation as AGL evolves uh, with different system protocols and system services. Uh, we need to evolve to, to catch up with that. So that was what happened in the last four years uh, with one adaptation to AGL. Okay, another uh, evolution. In 2012, we were using Qt WebKit. We moved to Qt WebKit 2 in the first two years, and the first uh, WebOS TVs were using web, uh, Qt WebKit 2. Then we moved to use Qt Web Engine. Um, uh, the idea was that uh, everybody was moving to Blink, and it was not as, uh, much more uh, than that. The idea is that uh, it, uh, we had this feeling that uh, Chromium uh, and Blink were uh, moving faster, were doing more uh, for the web platform, so it would save costs for maintenance to move to, to use uh, an engine based on Blink and Chromium. Um, so yeah, we use uh, Qt Web Engine. Qt already has uh, a part that would uh, save us time for doing that port. But uh, from 2015, um, we moved to create our own, our own binding layer, layer uh, and drop Qt web engine. So well, uh, this WebOS web, web, web view um, is a new component that replaces Qt web engine, and um, one is built now on top of that. Why? Um, the main reason. Um, there are a few reasons, but there was uh, a concern about the licensing model on, on Kit Web Engine at the time. It was the first component, one of the first components that moved to LGPL v3. So um, there were the contents about the patent clauses, and for um, a TV vendor, that was a kind of a problem. And not only a TV vendor, the, we found several others that would have some concerns on that. So. There was no uh, other Qt web engine use at that time. Um, so in the end, um, uh, we did this. We removed that dependency, at least in the web engine integration side. It also allowed to, to simplify the, the continuous upgrade uh, to track upstream Chromium at that time, because 
uh, at least the media stack is in WebOS is way different. So maintaining a different web stack on top of Git web engine, on top of Chromium, and try to, to keep that, that baseline and try to keep up stream, it was going, it started to become quite hard. Uh, then uh, we did uh, something different, and that's uh, more recent. Uh, one was based on Qt for a long time, but uh, there was a concept from some stakeholders, not LG, that has some partnership with Qt that is strong, so it wasn't a problem, but for other stakeholders, the GPL uh, dependency was kind of, of a problem. And the other reason for using Qt uh, diminishes a bit because basically uh, C++ and STL um, growed a lot, improved a lot, and simplified uh, things. So it was not that important to have all the pieces that Qt was providing uh, for, free, for free as part of the bundle. So in last year, well, two years ago, uh, we moved to not depend on Qt anymore, and now it's based on STL and other C++ libraries for JSON parsing, and a bit of GLIF for the main loop. Um, we moved from QMake to CMake. Okay, but the thing is about stability. Um, one didn't change a lot in the last 10 years, so the main ideas that we had running uh, 10 years ago uh, are still there, the way we handle the way running web applications, etc. So it has been useful. The architecture has been flexible enough to adapt to the web engine changes uh, we explained, dependency changes, new products, and even OS changes. So we, we've been able to port uh, one to different OSs, different web engines, and it adapted very well. So first, uh, about the future, Bobo is still here to stay. It's, uh, LG is spending uh, lots of money uh, on making it being the, the, uh, the main part for the Bobo TV offering. Um, they've been even uh, allowing it to be used for third party um, uh, TV vendors through the Bobo hub. And there are some future discussions. We are now using GCC for building. We may move in the future to use Clank, basically because it's the tool chain uh, that Chrome supports. So maintaining uh, both tool chains is kind of problematic. And we want to improve the upgrade cycles. We want to be closer to apps in Chromium. So that, there are many refactorings happening nowadays uh, to improve uh, this also. So these are the final remarks. Um, yeah, 10 years of the project, more to come. Uh, it's in millions of products. It proved to be useful. And it allows to create products be, um, offering, you know, I mean, don't put this in Arduino. It's not going to work. But for products with uh, 512 MB, uh, even 256 MB, it's possible to provide a good web experience. So that's it. And thanks, uh, these are the, the sponsors of the work, so, so it's important to, to show them. Thank you. Okay, we have a few, we have a few questions, uh, starting with the online questions. The first the question online was, um, if I have an LG TV, um, and they want to rebuild the firmware from sources, is that possible? <laughs> I don't no. think you're going to know the answer to that one. <laughs> no. No. Uh, okay. LG uh, Web OS TV is proprietary OS. Um, I say that maybe around 10% uh, of the software is proprietary, but you cannot be the firmware. And actually, TV industry is quite bad in that regard because uh, of DRM and of the requirements of the TV um, content providers like uh, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, uh, all these kind of things, they, they want to have um, a strong hold on how the contents are delivered and when the contents are possible to be delivered and paid and whatever. So 
it's not all a thing about LG, Samsung has the same problem, um, other vendors have the same problem, it's that the industry uh, that will deliver contents to the TV uh, are quite problematic on that regard. That's something that I would like to see it improve. Uh, Google has done a lot for at least reducing the path that is related to the ARM, but that's a problem of the TV industry that we need to deal nowadays. So, um, so we manufacture OEM boards, and over the years I've found, uh, we manufacture OEM boards, and over the years I found it really difficult to know what kind of platforms. Uh, I've found it really difficult to recommend UX platforms to our clients. Mm. So, you know, nowadays we're starting to look at Flutter. That seems to be something people are talking about. I, I'm really sort of not a UX person. So when would you say we should be recommending this and WebOS as opposed to other alternatives? What are the sort of pros and cons, as it were? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, there, there are like uh, different lines. So for system UI, you can choose whatever you want. Flutter is quite efficient, Qt is quite good, web is possible. Um, if that's not a, a your decision, the main thing is that do you need web applications on top of that? Because you may want to play third party content like a um, Twitter application that is web, like uh, YouTube, things like that. If you need third party content, you may also want to have a web runtime. So, you, you already have the needs, you may want to still use web also for the system UI. It's your choice. Uh, the tooling is a great advantage of web contents because there are tons of developers, there are tons of uh, ways to, to do UI in web, and it's pretty much a common standard for that. But yeah, it's, it's, Thank you. it's a Thank choice. You. All right. Thanks, everybody. Time's up. Okay.